What's up, everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another Sunday Essence Chat. Today, I've got an incredible guest joining me. Uh, my man is doing some big things over on YouTube. Great dude. And he took the time to be able to come and talk to all of us about various different things about gaming and maybe a little bit more. So um, I am introducing my man, Kevin. How are you doing today, man? I am doing awesome today. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. No problem. So it's your your YouTube channel, Kevin Kennison. It's just Kenson. Kenson. <laughs> Kenson. Kenshin. No, it's in the room. No. <laughs> Ken, how do you say it? I'm subscribed, but I just call you Kevin. <laughs> it's Kenson. Just K-E-N-S-O-N. Okay, cool, cool. All right, Kenson. probably what it was, like, up the family line somewhere, but I don't know. Someone had changed their last name for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you? Okay, real quick question. Um, you know, you have eight hundred thousand subscribers. You know, you've been making content. I think since twenty fourteen, if I'm not correct, um, with this channel. More yes, with this channel, I have been doing it since two thousand fourteen. And I've actually been on YouTube in general since about two thousand. I always forget. It's either two thousand ten or two thousand eleven, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. where I started uh, on another channel actually, uh, which is now just under the name Jonathan Morrison. Uh, for a while, it was TLD Today. Before that, it was uh, Texas Lunch and Dinner. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the old, old videos on that channel, like two thousand eleven, you will see a decade younger me uh, <laughs> staring at a camera, not blinking, speaking very <laughs> monotone about game reviews. No. Uh, oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs> Yeah, and then it was around 2014 that uh, yeah, I spun off my own channel, which is the one that is uh, the one with the garage. Nice, nice. That's that's good stuff, man. And you know, I I totally relate with you with the uh, decade earlier you staring into a camera monotone. Because if you go back to my old channel, Player Essence Gaming, and you can see me a decade ago, like yeah, let's let's uh, talking about Nintendo news. Uh, okay, guys, yeah, I, I I like so one time one time, dude. Like seriously, I'm like doing a news video. I'm at my mom's house, you know, it was, a, it was a long time ago. It was over a decade ago now at this point. And I'm like doing the news and I'm like spinning in my chair and I'm like going, I'm like rocking my bed <laughs> and saying the news and the, and the audio swaying back and forth. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you get the weirdest ticks the first time you're trying to like have a camera persona or not even trying to have a camera persona, just talking to a camera because that's not a thing you do, right? Usually you're talking to a person. And so mm -hmm. when you're talking to a lens and you have no previous training in that whatsoever, it's a weird thing. I mean, yeah, you, you, you're talking about swaying back and forth. One of my ticks I had for a while, and I, this wasn't like the oldest videos, but maybe like a year in, I started getting this habit where I wasn't as monotone, but what I did do, couldn't tell you why, no logical reason for it, I would do this. Like when I'm talking, my head would keep going back. Like I would just keep showing, just like, let's let's change profile, change profile. No, just to, just- Trying to get your good side on the profile. camera? Trying to get you like, which, see which one's better? <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, it, that's like a thing, right? I mean, anytime I talk to someone about like getting into this stuff, I'm like, yeah, like how do you improve or how do you get better? I'm like, you just gotta do it, man. Because <laughs> the 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 everyone who starts out, unless you come from a background in acting or something, you're just gonna have that awkward, hi, camera. Yeah. Uh, what are we doing today? <laughs> yeah, and you know what the funniest thing is? It's like I, you know, I went and wasted 20k over at Fresno State, you know, because I have my bachelor's degree in kinesiology and communication. Mm -hmm. So I have a communication degree. So I, I, I know how to speak to people. And I even still was like, uh, in front of a camera, you know? So that was like, that's like the funny thing about it is like, I have a communication sure. degree. And even with the communication degree, my first camp videos were still terrible in terms of how I, you know, how I spoke and everything, you know? Yeah, exactly. Well, and, you know, even having a degree in communications, you'll know them like a big part of why you have that shift is that, you know, you're used to having people to bounce off of a little mm -hmm. bit, you know, even when it's not a conscious thing, you know how to, you react to people's eyes lighting up or them, mm -hmm. you know, you, you can, you can adapt when you're talking to a lens, it's just this circle in front of you and you're going, uh, I'm saying things that are right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's always a trip. So it's always cool to see people who've grown their channel, you know, 800,000 subscribers, definitely going to get to a million, uh, maybe even this year, heck, who knows? Maybe even this year. Maybe um, so yeah, I, heck man, I, I've been loving to see the growth on the channel and everything. I do want to talk real quick. I mean, you have some of the best thumbnails in the game, man. Like where, where do, who's doing these thumbnails for you? Are you doing it? Who's doing these thumbnails for you? So I actually do work with, uh, do work with a team. Um, I've got two guys that I work with, uh, for, we kind of just constantly switch roles in terms of, you know, shooting, editing, that kind of thing. Uh, thumbnails, though, in general, I'm usually not the one doing the direct work, but I do have a sort of 
oversight, I guess you would call it. You know, I look at them and go, okay, like I like the idea here, or this is the direction I have, mm -hmm. but here's where we need to tweak this this way. Here's mm -hmm. where I kind of want to see this a little more. Um, and, you know, and the big thing with going back again to the idea of like when people talk to you about like, oh, you know, well, how do I get into doing this kind of stuff? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things, and I have to tell myself this because I don't do it as often as I feel like I should sometimes, the thumbnail is so important. It's, yeah. it's, However much time you're putting into the video, you almost need to put twice that much into the thumbnail alone mm -hmm. because, you know, it, you, you see it all the time. People sometimes get frustrated with certain thumbnail types because they'll be like, oh, I'm so tired of people with their hands on their head or mm -hmm. why do I got to see this guy's goofy smile or whatever. And it's like, it, it works. Yeah. It's human psychology because at the end of the day, like, you know, every now and then you can make a really good looking thumbnail. It's just a nice minimalist photo of a piece of tech. But oftentimes you need something that on its own is so evocative by itself that it can do that work. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you're doing a news update, you don't got something to work with. Yeah. Um, and so the, the, it's just human psychology, you know, getting people to, to have that, pardon, sorry, uh, to have that color contrast, to have a human face that stands out in mm -hmm. the line. Uh, it's a very important aspect because it doesn't matter how amazing your content is that is important it's not like you shouldn't care about the content itself obviously mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't get butts in the seats in the first place you then know, it, you're, you're you, video, you wasted your time with the video if you're not maximizing your effort with your title and also with your thumbnail as well i mean and that's the funny thing is like people talk about titles and like clickbait and stuff like that it's like dude no content creator likes to do clickbait or would like to like sit there and work 10 hours on a thumbnail or do nobody wants to do that but it's like you have to you know what i'm yeah. saying like no, absolutely and there's always i mean especially when the concept of clickbait and talking about things like titles and seo and blah blah mm -hmm. you know there's always going to be that removed debate of how far is too far where mm -hmm. exactly is the line and at the end of the day kind of each creator i think kind of comes to their own like this is what i feel comfortable doing but you know with few exceptions yeah none of us like doing that kind of stuff at the end of the day right it's yeah. playing the game i mean i can't tell you how many times i've put up a video where i put a much more true to heart title that i feel is good and i'm mm -hmm. like yes like this is i'm gonna try and just be straight to the point i think this one will be able to work because it's like a good subject and then i see those opening views and i'm like okay what if i just add like let's just put a question mark here exactly it. but it's, you know i do think that there's a separation though between like the good clickbait and bet, like, like legitimately false bad clickbait. And I think that all of us kind of like in our circle, you know, when it comes to like your videos, I don't see it as really clickbait. I say it as like, if it's clickbait, it's the good type. Like your your video on like the analog pocket, like the Game Boy Switch, you know, like that. I mean, I, I love that title because it's kind of like a joke. It's kind of like a little clickbaity, but it's not. You see it, you see exactly what it is. It's Nintendo, you know, like, so it, it's okay in that sense, you know? Yeah, it, it, it plays with the concept itself, right? And I think that's the big thing, too, is that you want to make sure that even when you have a title that's maybe a little evocative, you want to make sure it is still true to the content in some way, right? Because I even tie that in that video, right? I say, like, hey, one of the things that's really appealing to me about this is that with the dock, this is effectively like a Switch or Game Boy games. You, know, mm -hmm. you play it on the go, drop it in the dock, have it go to your TV. And so that's something where... Yes, absolutely. I think there is that room to argue. Oh, well, that's kind of clickbaity because you called it this. I mean, it's not a switch. It's a, it's a analog pocket. It's like, yes, but you clearly see awesome, right? you, yeah, the, the yeah. thumbnail clearly There's shows what it is, too. So, <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, that's the thing, too. Right now, I always like to think, you know, sometimes people talk about those kind of titles or, or thumbnails and be like, oh, well, you know, you're just trying to trick people. And I'm like, no, man, if anything, I have faith in a lot of people that they like they get it, you know, yeah, like yeah. there's there's absolutely some titles and thumbnails that some people do that certainly cross that line. Mm -hmm. It's like this has nothing to do with what you're talking about. What mm -hmm. is going on here with this thumbnail, whatever. Um, but but I, I, I feel like my audience gets it, you know, like yeah. people understand it. It's like it's just sometimes you need that thing that helps make the eyes go. OK, what's this guy talking about today? Like yeah. I just like, I got to click on this right now. What's happening? Ex <laughs> and at the end of the day. The content's there to back it up. Right? Exactly. That's the other important part. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So let's talk the the, the beanie. You, you wear this beanie a hundred percent of the time. Is it that cold where you live? What's going on with this beanie, man? All right. So the beanie. Uh, it is hilarious to me how often people get like like it's it's fun when people are like oh like you know why are you wearing a beanie all the time? There are some people who are outright like frustrated and angry about it for whatever reason i don't know if it's like self-projection or something they should be like why do you always just come on man take the take the thing off what are you doing ah and i'm like oh, it's like wearing a beanie to be honest really uh 
again, going back to decade younger me on other channels, it's not really a secret. If you look, even on my own channel, not even on the other channels I've been on, if you go far back enough my own channel, I haven't removed any videos. There is a time where I start wearing the beanie and it's just kind of became the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason I wear it, honestly, is it's, it's kind of threefold, I guess. Uh, one, oh. with where I shoot, we have a lot of downcast light. Mm. Uh, and surprise, surprise, I don't have all of my hair. And look, I don't care about like losing hair, but at the same time, the like reflectiveness from the top before we got better at learning how to light mm -hmm. uh, was annoying. Uh, two, I just like how I look at a beanie, to be honest. I think it's just a good presence on camera and works. And three, it kind of just turned into this running joke where I'm like, oh, yeah, beanie reveal, like a million subs. Let's do it. Like, yeah, sure. Just keep watching. <laughs> You'll see what's underneath. You can go to an older video and see me, you know, eight years younger with that one. If you want to see today, okay, then you gotta, we got to get to a million subs and then we'll do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, it kind of reminds me a little bit of like, I used to always wear a 49ers hat, like in my videos. Although I did not wear one. And then like, it was like, it was like 2000, I think it was like two, 2014 or 20 something. I used to always just wear a 49ers hat, like 2014, 2015, 2016. Until finally like 2017, I was just like, I, I think I'm not going to wear a hat anymore. I just don't feel like wearing a hat anymore. <laughs> so, but yeah. And it was so funny. Like I would mess with people and be like, hey, well, what about your hair? You get it? I'm like, so then one time I, I would like have my 49ers hat on. I'm like, all right, guys, hair reveal. And I go down and I just switch my 49ers hat like to a different 49ers hat. I was like, there you guys go. There, there's the reveal. It's a different hat. <laughs> yeah. We've we, we definitely played it out a couple times. I think we did one. I don't know if we used this in the video itself, but we did use it for the thumbnail where I wore a... Uh, a Sora wig. Like I just had the over the top, like kingdom hearts hair. <laughs> uh, or maybe it was a cloud wig. I can't remember. It was, it was something over the top square Enix, you know, Nomura style hair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, the, uh, the spiky, that you know, hair and all that. Yeah, nice. Everywhere. Yeah, I think I did another one where like I removed it, but it was just a shining sun. So you couldn't see anything after I, like, <laughs> we, we definitely played with that joke a couple times and just like, Oh yeah. Okay. Fine. I'll take it off. Yeah. Cool. Nice. Nice. Absolutely. So uh, let's talk a little bit about some games, man. What you've been up to? What do you, what games are you kind of playing right now? I know Pokemon Legends is a game that you've been playing. So if you want to talk about that a bit or any other games, man, I'd love to hear what you've been up to. Yeah, for sure. So Pokemon Legends is absolutely the most recent thing I've been game playing. Uh, just came out yesterday. So I picked it up in the morning and I ended up putting in about probably eight hours. I haven't actually played much today. Ooh. I ended up just having to take it in the morning. But really, really liking it so far. It's, you know, I still have some specific give and takes with things that I, you know, I'm like, oh, I wish this was a little bit of this, but in terms of just them doing something different, I mean, just the series really needed, I think, a breath of fresh air. Not that they haven't had spinoffs and more experimental titles before, but this one feels much more like a, hey, we're kind of thinking of maybe taking the main line a little more over here. Mm -hmm. How is this? How do you guys like this? How does this feel? And it's, I, I really like some of the changes and updates they're going with it. There's still little things. Uh, no, what, what are those things that you don't like? I mean, absolutely. I, I know for me, like I've talked about in some videos that I've been making that like, you know, like the definitely like the world could have been better, a little bit better fully realized, a little bit more texture yeah. detail in the open world. I mean, it's still fun to explore and do stuff, but that definitely like the graphics definitely could have been a bit better. I mean, that's one of the things that I talked about. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Visually. Yeah. I, that's not even, yeah. The visual thing is absolutely one of the things where it's a little weaker. Uh, it definitely looks better on handheld, and I think they kind of intentionally met, went for like, yeah, most people are going to do this handheld, right? It's Pokemon. No one's going to put this on their TV, are they? Yeah. The moment you go on TV and you see those draw distances, whew. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's part of it. I think the other thing, too, is the sort of, I understand why it works this way, but it's still not what I would prefer in that it's open world, but at the same time, it's not really open world mm -hmm. in the sense of they want to guide where you go a little bit and there's certain areas they want to rope off to a certain extent. And part of how that gets realized almost feels unnatural in the kind of environment and the kind of game it looks like it should be. And a large part of that is your character's maneuverability, right? There are some times where it's like, I can walk up this hill, right? Nope, never mind. Okay, can't walk up that. Can I go over here? Nope, that's a wall too. All right, good to know. So that can get a little frustrating because I think the Otherwise, the, the visual design looks very much like it should be. Everyone's going to hate this comparison. But, like, you know, obviously everyone brings the Breath of the Wild example. Yeah. I'm not necessarily looking for that degree of, oh, I want to climb every wall and go up these mountains and all that kind of stuff. Not necessarily that. It's just definitely this degree of kind of corralling you a little bit with where you can go in what order that feels just against what the visual style would imply mm -hmm. because it's um, yeah because it's kind of like an open area game you know like there's area yeah. like open-ended areas but it's not quite a completely open world 
Exactly. Yeah. And it sometimes gets frustrating with just how sometimes you feel like you should be able to walk up a hill or something to get somewhere and you're like, nope, I need to find the exact path they want me to do to get there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. You can't even jump, which is weird sometimes. There'll just be a little step and you're like, nope, I can't. No, I'm just going to walk into it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not until you get like the, uh, you got to get like some of the other stuff that like in, to, to where you can really truly go any like or at least get exactly. past some of those obstacles. But in the early game, at least, yeah, definitely a bit frustrating because you think you should be able to do like some of the stuff that you're saying. So, right. yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. So um, you, you like the direction, though. Do you feel that the future Pokemon games could kind of like, because I, I still think there's going to be like the Generation 9. There's still going to be like the, the multiplayer Pokemon. You think they're going to take some of the stuff from this game and add it into the uh, the next generation? Yeah, you know, that's the interesting question, right? Is does this become, is this a testing ground for things to add into the main line, even though this is also in and of itself a main line in, in its own way? Mm -hmm. uh, or is this a experimental additional series, right? Like, what do we see looped in or what do we see? Because there are certain things to do. There are certain quality of life things that I really hope they do bring into the main line. Uh, for instance, Pokemon moves. I love the fact that your Pokemon just learns a move and you just go into your settings and say, I want this load out of four moves. Mm -hmm. You still have the traditional restrictions, but it's not this whole thing where it's like, oh, I got to go find the Pokemon trainer to relearn this move. Mm -hmm. I have to talk to this guy to forget this kind of thing. Like, it's it's a whole song and dance you had to do before with that is now just a go into your settings for that Pokemon and just add that, remove that. Awesome. Uh, I love... The turn changes, the fact that there's now like kind of more used to a speed stat other than going first. Not that speed wasn't already an incredibly strong, important thing, mm -hmm. but actually adding this kind of new layer of tactics of like, do you want to do a really strong move that's going to hold you back a little bit and might get you punched twice? You know, do you do the quick move? Do you, there, there's a little more fun. And it actually makes things a little more unpredictable sometimes in combat. Because even when you use the little like turn order predictor thing, that doesn't put into account enemy choices. Mm -hmm. So you might be like, oh, yeah, the enemy is only going to get one act. Then that guy busts out an agile move and you go, right, yeah. they can do that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, so there's lots of stuff that's kind of redone how you set up Pokemon and how fights work that I would love to see come to kind of the mainline formula that would absolutely shake up a lot of the meta a bunch. Um, but I also am really interested in the idea of them not necessarily quarantining this as its own thing and not letting there be that kind of cross-pollination, but I would love to see more games explore the kind of general concept this game is doing, you know, where mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely much more single-player driven and uh, the pacing is so different, too, in terms of the side quests and the way exploration is handled. It's not quite the ritual of Pokemon of, here's your starter town, go to the next town, beat that gym leader, mm -hmm. now follow this path to go here. You know, it's a very different kind of pacing that, it kind of allows you to mess around a little bit on your own, yeah. uh, which is nice. Yeah, I, I, I do I do like that freedom that the game gives you, which I think that's why I think this game is getting like so much buzz over it because it's just different. Um, some of the other quality of life stuff too, like the switching of the Pokemon right there on the map. Like you can just switch to any Pokemon that you have in your in your party. Mm -hmm. Being able to switch the, to the items, just very easily be able to do that. The stealth aspect, the Pokeball, like the catching aspect mm -hmm. is just fun. Just like, it's almost like, I don't know if you play baseball or if you like baseball. Or if you just threw a ball back in the day when you were a kid, but just like throwing and catching a ball was fun. Like, you know, like just throwing and catching was fun. So I kind of have like that same aspect of me, like being like a pitcher or something like that. And just like nailing the Pokeball on the top. Like just nailing the Pokemon and being like, yeah, I, I nailed that Pokemon. I got like the nice little back, the back hit. So it's like, yeah, the, the, the catch rate goes up. Amazing. Yeah, no, I love how that back hit works with just the extra. There's also something funny about the fact that you can do the back hit when you're initiating a battle by throwing out a Pokeball. It just seems like almost imagine that Pokemon's point of view where it's just you get hit in the back of the head. Now there's this guy trying to attack you. They got a sneak attack. It's just, it's, it's just a change of pace. that's really fun. It's also very sped up in a way that feels fun, but not tedious. Because mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, when you look back at, say, Pokemon Let's Go, that had a similar-ish thing where it's like, oh, yeah, you just catch Pokemon. You don't necessarily have to fight them, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But that just, you know, you'd still have to go to the loading screen to get into the fight. Not it's, loading screen, but, you know, there's the animation. No, it, I, it, I it, talked it, about that. It's a loading screen. It is, you, you, load in, you load into it, it goes, dun, 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 you get your experience, and then you come out, and it just becomes a tedium of over and over yeah. and over again. <laughs> exactly. Whereas in this, it's like, oh, there's five Pokemon, I'm in the bushes, I can just throw. Okay, caught that one, throw, caught that one. Like, it just, it feels so much better. Uh because, yeah, I mean, and this is even a thing that people were talking about with Brilliant Diamond Shining, Shining Pearl, right, is going back to random encounters. It just breaks up the pacing so much. Mm -hmm. it, it removes some of your sense of control, which 
this game, you know, again, going back to Pokemon on the field, but also not really having that loading screen feeling mm-hmm. outside of actually getting into a fight, uh, just really ups the pace of it and feels so much better. Yeah, and, like, the fact that you can, like, move around, even, like, even though it it's still turn-based, but the fact that you can still mm-hmm. just move your person around, and if you just, like, you can choose to run, or you can just keep running, and, like, it'll just yeah. end the battle, you know, <laughs> which, was, which yeah. was pretty cool, or you can, like... Um, Let's say you know that you're going to, like, kill the Pokemon. Like, you can just, like, you know, beat the Pokemon, then already start running off to next where you're going to do. And then it'll just finish the battle, and then your Pokemon will come right back to you. So it's just, like, it's just, like, really seamless. The seamlessness of it, yeah. you know, just being able to get in and out is, is cool. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good direction for Pokemon. Hopefully they, they really kind of fine-tune the next Legends game. But, I mean, based right. on, I'm not sure. I mean, we don't have any sales indications right now, or at least we don't have any numbers. But... Mm. All things pointing to this game is blowing up. Like people are rushing out. Like GameStop had huge lines for it, way bigger than um than uh, Brilliant Diamond Shining Pro. I mean that might be due to COVID constrictions for some places, <laughs> but I mean from mm-hmm. what I understand, man, it had a huge huge launch. I got a couple friends that work at some uh, distribution manager retail at uh, retail uh, Best Buy and Walmart, and they're like, dude, we're moving like crazy amounts right now. You know, that's kind of where I kind of get an idea for my sales videos that I do in Amazon. It's number one on Amazon, you know, so it's just, it's actually kind of killing it. Eshop, it's number one around the yeah. world on the eShop. So I, I think this game is going to, I think it's going to do really well. So they're going to look at the money too. They're going to look at it and be like, okay, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> like this well, is- I mean, it makes- it's kind of a no-brainer, though, right? That it's like having the impact it is because the the worst kind of take I've seen, other than people being like, "Oh, graphics are bad, therefore I'm not going to pick it up." Aside from those kind of takes, mm-hmm. the worst I've seen from, from from some people is, "Oh, you know, enough games. Kind of, you know, I didn't really like Sword and Shield. I really Diamond Shining Pearl wasn't my thing." But at the same time, you see the kind of early shots of this, and graphics talk aside, I mean, so much of this game, while not perfectly matching up with has a lot more in common with that kind of dream of what if Pokemon finally came to console, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, what does that look like? And I mean, as far back as gold and silver, I remember people already kind of talking about wanting to see this type of game exist. And so mm-hmm. the fact that here we are, and finally some form of it is here. It's like, I, I gotta know, right? Like I gotta at least pick it up and find out like how this is panning out. Exactly. And I think there's, there's a lot of intrigue with this one, which yeah, I'm very excited to see how those sales numbers turn out for this. Yeah, I think a lot of people that were saying, like, the whole... I think people are just going to pick it up anyway. Uh, I, people did oh, that yeah. with Sword and Shield. I know people that were like, I'm not going to get it. And then, like, their profile says that they're playing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think that's, like, the, the typical thing with po- with Pokemon. But, no, yeah. like, I know... Like games in general a lot of times. Yeah, I know numerous people who said, I'm not getting it. There's no way Sword and Shield, they did this. Graphics, and then they're playing it. I'm like, why'd you get the game? Oh, well, you know, I, I, I had a gift card. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right all right all right sure hey no problem man no problem uh so let's go to move on a little bit here i know you're a big zelda fan aren't you yeah 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 real big yeah. zelda fan uh, uh, fan of really i mean nintendo and rpgs in general and zelda the definition of an rpg gets a little weird sometimes with that but adventure fantasy game in general you know i'm like mm-hmm. yeah i'm all in mm-hmm. so what do you feel about legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 is it is it dropping this year or not? That's the big bet that everybody has. I'm on Team 2022. I'm like, hey, man, I think it's going to drop this year because Pokemon came out earlier. There's got to be something. Bayonetta is not big enough for that final game. I mean, maybe there's a Mario Odyssey too, but we haven't heard anything about that. I mean, what would be the big November game? You know, so to me, I feel like it's just setting itself up to be November, but I want to hear your thoughts on it. Yeah, you know, I my approach with Breath of the Wild 2 is very much how I feel about a lot of games this year, and really have felt about a lot of games since the start of COVID. Uh, I am cautiously optimistic that they are going to hit their target goal. Stuff happens, man. Like, yeah. it just, you know, I, I, I'm not going to be shocked if it gets delayed, mm-hmm. but if I had to pick this year or delay... I'm going to say this year, you know, like I feel, I, I, I want to put that energy out there. I want to have, you know, but if they end up delaying it, it's probably going to be for a good reason and I'll be patient. And I'll play it when it comes out. There's so much this year, man. There's yeah. already so much. Like this fe- I, February, I, man, February's nuts. February and March back to back. I don't yeah. know how I'm going to play it, You know, I was talking late last year and early this year, like, you know, maybe I should really start getting like, even though I'm not getting advanced copies for stuff, I should start doing game reviews, just pump some stuff out. And I'm looking at February and March being like, all right, 
how would I prioritize <laughs> these games yeah. back to back right now? I don't even know how we're going because like all the games got delayed from like last year. Everything got delayed into like the first quarter of this year. So yep. I mean, we're looking at Pokemon right now, and it's already pretty much February at this point, you know. And then yep. you know you're looking at Horizon Forbidden West, which are you excited about that game at all? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, well, like I mean, the upcoming months alone, right? There's I'm excited about that. I'm excited about Elden Ring. Yes. Uh, in March, Triangle Strategy. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mo- Monarch is, wait, is Monarch late February? Or Monarch late is like, I, I th- is it March or is it February? I think it's February. No, it's February. Yeah, yeah it's February. It's February. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So Monarch then, uh, geez, I put up a whole list for myself earlier to look at. And I was like, oh, <laughs> this, this February, March is rough. Hold on. Let me see if I can find this list real quick. Uh, where did I put it? Yeah, man, it, it's it's uh, it, there's just so, so much, much while you look for the list, man. It's all good. There's just so much that's oh, coming Sifu out next month. Like, yeah, what'd you Sifu's say? Who's coming out? Sifu. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Sifu. Month, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, Dying Light Two. It's it, there's oh, yeah. It's gonna be it's a very fun month, but it's gonna be uh great to balance with work. <laughs> oh yeah. Also, a little um, a little game that uh that's coming out. It's called Ollie Ollie World, which I'm really excited about that game. You know, I'm looking forward me, to it. Me too. Yeah. I, I am very excited about it. I actually just put a video up about it the other day that, you know, full disclosure, was a sponsored video. Uh, but even in that video, I said, like, look, I normally don't do this kind of stuff. But, you know, I said, hey, let me put, try the game first. If I like it, we'll move forward. If I don't, we'll just stop right here. Mm-hmm. Played it. I was like, oh, I want to talk about this game. Like, I, w- I want to do a video on this because it, it is a lot of fun. I, I legitimately really enjoy it. I love the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. It's just one of those games that, like, it's – it's just good vibes. Like, mm-hmm. it's just a good game that I want to sit back and play. Like, it feels actually relaxing to me. I know it's kind of weird to say that video games aren't relaxing, like, always, but there's a difference between, like, a game that's fun but engaging and then a game where I'm just like, I'm just going to I'm just gonna sit here and vibe with this, but you know? Like, that's what I'm all, doing. Ollie Ollie <laughs> World gives, like, if you played the previous ones, which I played, it gives just, the music is incredible. I get chills just thinking yeah. about it. And it is a relaxing game. It, it can be a very... Um, challenging game in terms of getting all like oh, the yeah. stuff in the game but if you want to just vibe out and just play like a cool skateboarding game that's exactly what it is so i mean um i didn't get a sponsored post or anything like that but i can back up what kevin is saying here because the game <laughs> is amazing and if you're gonna do a sponsored post uh, well or a sponsored video do one for a cool game all y'all world exactly. is the game to do it for so i, I have yeah, no I issues with that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, and the yeah, the music's so good. I even said, I mean, this is completely true too, and I said this in the video. I, with the soundtrack, there were times where I finished playing, and I just, I just left the world screen open. You know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna do some other stuff. I got some things to work on, but I'm just gonna have this soundtrack playing. You know, I don't need, I don't need, you know, Spotify open or anything. Let's just listen to this. Yeah, <laughs> I, I knew the soundtrack was amazing because I remember like one of the first. It was either All Only World One or Two. I think it was the first game. I mean, it went to like PS Plus, and I remember playing it. And um, it was just on like the load screen. And my daughter was very young at the time. And she was just dancing. She was like, I think she was three. And she's just dancing and dancing to the music. So that's if you can get a baby to dance. like I've never seen her dance the way that she danced. It was just random. And I remember taking, I I still got a video of it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll have it playing or something (laughs) like that. But uh, she's just vibing and dancing to the music. And I'm just like, okay, cool, cool anime. Let's go. (laughs) So she loved the music as well. So yeah, the music's really dope, but hopefully Breath of the Wild 2 comes out, you know, um, obviously Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about Breath of the Wild just uh, before we kind of, you know, wrap it up here. Uh, what do you feel that they're going to do? Because, I, I mean, obviously we've seen some of the cool stuff that they're adding in, right? You got the, you know, the turn it into the water. I call it the Lemillion from My Hero, or you just kind of can go through certain solid objects right. and all that. But what do you feel that they're going to do? Because they haven't really shown us anything. So what is your plan or what do you feel this game is going to do that really kind of makes it say, okay, that's a sequel. It's not just the same thing, like an expansion, but an actual sequel to the first game that was just so legendary right i mean pardon the pun or pardon you know no pun intended but it was so legendary and it was such a big it was a system seller it was the reason why switch got off to such a great start the best-selling zelda game of all time what do you feel is the the thing for this one you know i'm gonna preface first off with that with a lot of games uh i have i've kind of hit a point in my life where with a lot of titles i actually try to like not theorize too heavy Mm -hmm. like i sometimes just want to let it wash over me as it is because Mm -hmm. there's been times where there's games that like you know i go into them on launch day and i'm like angry about it because i had built something else up in my head and then i go back to that game you know six months later i'm like oh this is great what what was i angry about like what was i like why was i so turned off like the first time i played this Mm -hmm. and so i've really developed this habit of trying to not 
put myself in that mode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but <laughs> for the sake of discussion, uh, you know, with Breath of the Wild 2, the, the thing that's really been interesting to me is, and this happens with a lot of games, but I feel like it's a little more warranted in this case. Some of the really interesting theories with how they're actually going a little harder on uh, world building and maybe kind of interplay, intertwined plot between this and the first one. I mean, there's, I'm sure you've seen your share of them as well. The stuff with like, oh, there's going to be time travel and you're actually going to play as like Ganondorf in the past or like there's all these kind of <laughs> yeah, there's... really out there ideas. Yeah. But I mean, that's honestly the level of secrecy we're seeing with here because look, Nintendo always does things at their own pace, but even by their historical standards, this has been especially kind of, you know, we get the hype reel type trailers. There hasn't really been anything. And, you know, maybe that's what this next, whatever, not necessarily E3 because how E3 is going, but you know, the next big summer Nintendo direct or whatever Nintendo feels like, maybe we'll get some kind of more kind of heavier introduction. But it does feel like with this one, they're playing a little closer to the chest. I mean, even that very first trailer, right? That's a very ominous trailer by Nintendo standards and by Zelda standards, you know, because it's not like, Oh, look at this awesome adventure going to go on. It's you're going into this dark cave and it's this very kind of, you know, especially by Zelda standards, kind of tense feeling scene and moment that just kind of cuts to black. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're very clearly trying to kind of play up a little bit of that mystery aspect this time. Um, because again, too, the thing with Zelda is historically, you almost never get sequels, right? Not direct ones. It's, you know, we had what Majora's Mask, which kind of had its own kind of play on being a spin off almost more so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so having a game that's playing directly off a previous one it's not like we're resetting to zero, you know, we are bringing those things from the past game into this one. And because of that, I think they really are trying to, there's going to be a twist. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I I don't think it's just going to be like, here's the breath of the wild map, slightly updated and changed for game two. And here you go. Like, I don't think it's going to be something that incremental. I think there's going to be some kind of very interesting thing that's going to happen early on and they don't want us to know about it. That's yeah. how I feel about it. Yeah, I, um, absolutely. Yeah. And like, like you said, like with the, um, having a sequel, I mean, it, yeah, it's very, it doesn't happen a lot. You know, I know there was the, uh, the lesser known games, uh, like Phantom Hourglass and then like Spirit Tracks. There was like that, that was like the direct sequel. Like you said, Majora's Mask, but yeah, it doesn't right. very, it doesn't happen very often. They always kind of do something new. Uh, with this so yeah i'm excited to see what they're gonna get in with that as well what's good with the rpgs this year i know that there's a lot of rpg stuff that's happening this year triangle strategy i've heard you talk about that on twitter that you're excited for that i'm excited for it but what are the big rpgs that you're excited for or that you want to discuss man this year first off it's just a good year in general man i was looking at the the layout and it's it's a good year to be a fan like of rpgs in general but jrpgs in particular you know, my, my two biggest ones for sure are Triangle Strategy and Sea of Stars. Uh, oh, those yes. are the two I'm really big looking into because I'm, look, I like a lot of the new stuff that comes out too, but I, I'd be lying if I said that I was not really into just, I, I like the old feel, you know, the, the kind of SNES to PS2, really PS1 more so. That era of JRPG is just that kind of golden age. It's the golden era. No, it, it, it is. Yeah. yeah. And, and so games that really walk that line of, tapping into that but also not feeling afraid because there's some games that are like the love letters and they're good but you can tell that they were just kind of like all right we're just gonna make this again it's like Mm -hmm. that's cool but like let's let's move it somewhere at the same time you know we can still update things and and both of these titles are ones that i I get that vibe a little bit with especially sea of stars Uh, sabotage did such a great job with messenger kind of taking that ninja platformer genre and doing their own spin Mm -hmm. that that's really the main reason why i'm excited like see it like all the stuff we've seen so far looks good too but just knowing what they have done in the past with a different genre, I'm very excited to see them apply that same kind of style to JRPGs, which are you know, my favorite genre. Mm. Um, and then Triangle Strategy, really the, the main reason why I talk about that one a lot is because uh, some of my personal favorite games are like Final Fantasy Tactics and Tactics Ogre, which, you know, a lot of that is because they were led by the same guy who is not involved in Triangle Strategy. Uh, but uh, it, it at least looks like the effort is being put into trying to recapture that style of game. We haven't had that specific breed of RPG in a while. Uh, so just having something that taps into it a little bit, I'm, I'm happy to have my hands on, especially because it looks like they're really trying to do the plot branching aspect. Mm-hmm. And I, I eat that up. Like, give me, like, I, I, look, I enjoyed the RPGs that have the lots of micro choices and a few little things pan out differently. And then you get to basically the same ending and pick your red, blue or green. That's fine. 
But the ones where it's like, hey, look, you're going to make a choice and we're just going to go off the rails one of two ways. You know, it's, it's going to some things are going to be the same, but we're really going to change who joins you and who gets killed. And like, that's that's what I'm excited for. And I'm really I don't know if it's going to pay off on that, but I hope it does. You know, and I got kind of chills thinking about it because that game is it's like stressful. Like when you're going through like triangle strategy, it's like you feel like a certain type of way with not stressful as in like bad stressful, but like. Yo, this decision is really going to impact me. Like when I played the demo, I was thinking, yo, this is like serious. You got to really convince these people. And it's a vote. It's like a democracy type of thing. Like they vote for it. And you don't know what way it's going to go. I mean, yeah, you can completely convince somebody to do some things, but you're not always 100% sure which way it's going to go. So they're kind of playing off of that. And then like they all vote. And then like the flames of fate, it, it picks a path. So, I mean, that type of stuff is really cool. Like you don't always see how they did it in triangle strategy yeah. like you said it's sometimes like a okay well you pick this this or this i mean or th this this or this personas like that uh, fire emblem has a little bit of, of like that but at the end of the day you're just thinking okay well it's just going to be like one of the different things it doesn't necessarily feel as organic as this yeah. game and i think with the whole hd 2d stuff since you don't i mean they still spend time on graphics, but since you don't have to worry about the top of the line 3D graphics and everything and uh, the huge anime cutscenes, I think that they take a lot of time, you know, and care into these aspects because you do only have a certain amount of time. I mean, and I've never developed a game, but I've spoken with the developers and it seems like it sucks. <laughs> and it seems like I, everything takes forever to do, you know, even the littlest the, things. Yeah. No, the thing I always take to heart with any game development that I've ever say, I'm probably going to misquote this, but... The, the the fact that any video game ships is a miracle. Mm -hmm. The fact that just like from start to finish, like the fact that this came together in any form, let alone the ones that are like really good and classic, it's just that's that in and of itself is a triumph sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I was talking to Bob about this the other day, you know, when people talk about things with, you know, oh, well, this game was made this way because these devs are lazy. I always hate that argument. Not, not to say that sometimes, yeah, there are companies that maybe have different priorities and don't necessarily put in the work that you would want them to. But there's so much more nuance and complications and things that go into making any game. And just saying, oh, devs were lazy is like the most, it's just a conversation ender. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it doesn't it doesn't allow for any kind of further exploration of how do things turn out a certain way. It, it's crazy how like the work that just goes into making, you know? Uh, and going back to Triangle Strategy real quick, uh, not just, you know, the choices, but even within that demo, how differently things play out. I mean, it's two completely different fights, completely different things happening in the world. Like there is actual major feeling consequence. Now, maybe it'll just recollapse into itself right after mm -hmm. and it's the same plot. Who knows? But just that little kernel gives me hope. We'll see. Yeah, absolutely. And like to kind of talk about what you were saying just a little bit, like even like I think RPGs might even be worse when it comes to this development track. Not that other games aren't just as hard, but I think RPGs are even tougher because of all the little things, the little micromanaging things. I mean, uh, we, I, I mean I'm mean, i not sure if you're big into Mass Effect, and I think maybe you've talked mm -hmm. about it a bit, yeah. But Mass Effect, but like with Andromeda, like with the engine, like, whoa, we didn't even have RPG menus. <laughs> like for like that, for their their <laughs> engine that they have, that, that what is the, the engine that they use, the Frostbite? You know, Frostbite? yeah, Frostbite. so they didn't even have the menus and stuff. So I would guess that even with RPGs, it's even tougher. I know like with Legend of Zelda, it was the uh, Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity. They spent like half a year on grass. They're like, man, this is really difficult. We spent like half a year on grass. I'm like, oh, so maybe that's why they had some issues over here and there with some of the, you know, with optimization. And I'm like, they spent half a year on just getting the grass right because it was looking all funky and jacking up and clipping. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, this is... Yeah. This is insane. And, and then and then after you spend all those years, a dude gets to get lots of engagement on a hot take tweet about how, you know, the elbow moved the same in one shot from the past game. I don't know. It just, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely saw that. Especially like with Horizon. I mean, they spent how many years this game has been in development. And then in, in an instant, you just it's like somebody just wants to discredit all of that because of a uh, of a. <laughs> Of, of, yeah, of how something that, moves, uh, animation, or yeah. like God of War. I think somebody did, like God of War, they did that as, people did that as well. It's yeah, like, it was like getting into the boat. It's like, he gets in the boat the same. It's like, all right, did you want him to do a different hop this time? Yeah. Well, I mean, how much character development can you have in how you get in a boat? I don't know. I, you know, I've been watching Kirby do the same thing, and then that same dance, it looks the same animation to me. So, I mean, like, 
and like his sucking in animation looks the same to me. I don't think they, they change it much. I mean, I'm not saying that they use the same one, but like, who cares? It's like that's not the that's not the point. <laughs> it's cute. It works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, so it's so interesting to see uh, that. I, you know, I know the RPGs that you talked about, Triangle Strategy, Sea of Stars. I'm excited for both of those as well. Those are going to be really cool. But I mean. I think maybe this kind of can go into the line of RPG, but like Mario plus rabbits, uh, the, uh, oh, that yeah. game, that game's looking really good too. Yes. I I'm really excited to see what they add on to that because I mean, that was such a surprise the first game time it came out. It was like, Oh, I didn't know I wanted Mario cross rabbits cross XCOM. Okay, sure. Like mm-hmm. that's, that, that's not a genre I expected. I mean, who thought they were going to make that type of game with those properties, like a party game or something. Sure. But cover focus, tactical shooter. I, Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, the, the core gameplay of the first one was really fun, and I, I, I'm i curious to see where they kind of take that in this next one. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So we definitely, once again, thank you so much, man, for having you on. I, I know, like I said, this one went a little bit longer, guys, but we had to get the RPG talk. We had to get everything in while I have them. <laughs> so much more we can do. But, yeah, like you gotta, I got to respect everyone's time here. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, yo, Kevin, where can everybody find you at, man, if, if you don't mind like letting people know? I know Kevin on YouTube, Kevin Kenson. Kenison. Kenson. 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 See, there you go, Kevin well, Kenson. Just write it out. Just put it under my name. It'll work <laughs> under, under my name. Put it under, under me talking. Yeah, it happens all the time. Um, but, yeah, uh, all my stuff. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all under Kevin Kenson. I am very inventive with what I call stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's where you can find all my content. Absolutely. There'll be a link in the description as well. Also a link to his Twitter account. So you guys all go check that out. Kevin, it was awesome talking with you, man. I really do appreciate you spending your time here. And uh, yeah, guys, uh, this this uh, video, it's going to be up for you guys to be able to watch. I am, some of you guys asked me about like having it like on the pod, like Spotify or whatever, or, or all that type of stuff. I'll think about having it on there too. I'll, I'll think about that. But for right now, it's just going to be on here. So I do appreciate uh, Kevin for joining me. I appreciate that, man. And for everybody watching, thank you guys so much. Uh, subscribe if you're someone new, click the notification bell, all that good stuff. And uh, we will see you guys for the next one. Bye, everyone.